Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of How to Tech. Today, we're going to be talking about Excel and some of the powerful features and tools that are available to you from within Microsoft Excel. Uh, Excel is probably the most used application in the world. And in fact, in a recent survey, Excel data sheets actually were the most popular um, sheets that had uh, data stored in them anywhere in the world. There are literally billions and billions of Excel spreadsheets. They contain more data than all uh, SQL databases, uh, Oracle databases, all relational databases. Um, Excel is by far the most popular one. So today I want to go over just a few things that will allow you to leverage the power of Excel uh, in ways that maybe aren't obvious at first. Um, Excel can do many more things, of course, than we're going to go over today. One of uh, the great things that it can do and most powerful things is going to be uh, macros. And we won't get into macros today, but if you would like to uh, have a video on macros and how to create them and uh, some of the powerful things they can do, uh, just leave me a note in the comments in this video and I will be sure to make one of those for you. But for now, we're going to go into this video here, um, this spreadsheet here about uh, sales. And so let's say that you are tracking sales and you have uh, five people. I've just named them user one through five here. And um, you're tracking their number of sales throughout the month of January. And you're tracking how much money each sale uh, was worth. And so here you see I have um, just all this manual data that I've input here for all these users um, all throughout the month of January. And I have typed in the amounts. I've typed in how many sales were made on that particular day for that user. And then at the very bottom, I put a total. So all this is pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. Um, when you type the numbers in, they fill in by themselves. They format by themselves for the most part. Um, but the first thing that I want to show you is just the total down here. And you'll see for total uh, in sales in particular, I've put a function in called sum. And so if you want to total up any column, any um, number of cells, you want to find the sum of all of those numbers combined, then you'd use a function. And the function for that is sum. So um, anytime you're going to put in a function in Excel, you're going to start with the equal sign. And then after the equal sign, you're going to start typing just whatever you want to do. Let's say I want to find the sum. If I start typing S, you can see my suggestions start to come up. S-U-M. There we see sum is at the top. Um, let's say I wanted to find the uh, product. See product there as I type P-R-O. Uh, let's say I want to find the quotient. Q-U-O, there it is. There are hundreds and hundreds of functions from within Excel that you can use. So right now we'll type in sum. Then after you type uh, sum and it's highlighted there, if you press um, the tab key, You'll see now it wants me to tell it um, what cells do I want to sum up. Well, I want to sum up um, this whole column here. And so if I just press the up arrow, you see where um, this is highlighted now. I hold the shift key down and just keep the up arrow held down until I get to the very top. And those are all of the cells that I want to sum. So now I'll just hit the enter key. And sure enough, 37. I have 37 uh, sales there, and it summed it up for me very easily. Same thing on the next column. I have summed up uh, cells C2 through C38 to get my total sales amount. You don't have to type out the whole function again. All you really had to do here, if I just delete this, is if you copy uh, a cell that has a function already in it, and then you paste that right next to it, you'll see the 1800 comes right up. Because Excel is smart enough to know that I have moved over. And so instead of summing uh, column B, when I paste it, it actually summed the following column, column C. So now this isn't in uh, dollars, so I'm just gonna go right up here and click the um, accounting number format. And that's going to switch it back to the right format that I want. So that's uh, something very simple that you can do at any time with summing up numbers. Um, now I want to go to um, this sheet that I made called Total Sales. 
Now, in here in total sales, you'll see that these numbers, as we look at them, none of them are actually manually put in. Sales here has a function called sum if on each user. And then, of course, I have my total. Amount also has a sum if function for each user and then a total. And then I have a per sale value there, um, which is just simple division. Now, I'm going to show you how I came up with this sum if function. So this is uh, very useful for when you want to uh, group um, things together. Um, basically, you're telling Excel to sum it up if you see user one and you see the sales column. And so now I'm going to just slowly show you how this works. Um, now, the sum if function is first asking for the range. And so sum if, and I'm telling it the range, the range is over in the breakdown sheet. That's what that means there. Um, you type the sheet name and you put an exclamation mark and that will tell it to go look in a different sheet that you just put the name in of um, to go and find this data. Then you'll notice this um, dollar sign next to my column number or column letter A. The dollar sign just means that um, as I maybe copy and paste this formula, it tells it don't change the column. And then the same with the row there. Um, the number two, don't change that either. And that's good if you want to keep your range the same throughout the whole process. You want to put those dollar signs beside the column and the row. So my range is from A2 to D38 on the breakdown table or on the breakdown sheet. Now the second part of the formula is the criteria. What am I looking for? I'm looking for A2. What's A2 here? User number one. And then finally, what is the range uh, of my sum? It's the breakdown sheet and it's B2 through B38. So let's just look at that now. If I go to the breakdown sheet, you see my um, overall range for everything was A2 through D38. So that's this whole table that I made. A2 through D38. That's all of this. I wanted to look in all of this. And then I wanted it to find user 1 and I wanted it to look through for that for to find the sum which column? Column B. I wanted it to find B2 through B38 and sum all of those up. So that was the number of sales column. So now what I end up getting is the number 5. And if I look, sure enough, there are five sales, one, two, three, four, five, with user one. So that's how you use the sum if function. And so I just did that same thing on the amount, only instead of doing B2 through B38, I told it to look at C2 through C38. And we'll see that that column is the amount column. And so that allowed me to find this total right here. Um, without having to add it up myself. And then for the per sale, I simply divided the total by how many sales there were, um, equal that column, or I'm sorry, that cell divided by um, the sales cell. And so that's how I got my per sale value. So these are just a couple um, formulas that will very um, greatly reduce your amount of time that you have to spend in Excel when you're um, coming up with uh, values for different things. Now I want to look at the actual charts that we made here. Now these are two examples of pivot charts. Pivot charts are very powerful. They will do a lot of the formulating and a lot of these things for you without you even having to put in the functions. Um, you literally just have to select your data and then you can tell it where you want or what you want out of that data and how you want it to look. Here's my first example. So this, as you might, it might be familiar to you, was on the total sales sheet. You see the amounts there and the sales there for each person uh, that is reflected in this pivot table. Now, if we look at this pivot table and right click it 
we're going to go to we're going to right click it and we're going to go to show field list now what we'll see here um, is the different fields that we have and what we have set up here for our sum so what i've used is for my columns i have used um, my values which are um, my totals and then for my rows i've used user and then for my sums i have summed their sales and i have summed their total amounts so let's make this from scratch again so if we get on a cell and we go up to the insert tab we tap on this pivot table the first thing it wants to know is what is the range of um, cells that you want to create this pivot table from well i want to create this from the breakdown sheet and i want to create it from all of this data i won't include the total there i'll just include all that data there and click ok all right so now it knows uh, the fields and where to get the data so now what am i going to do with that data so you can put the fields in either columns rows values or you can just filter them out uh, which is really the, the same thing as not putting it in there so all right what i want to see on my rows is my users so i take users and i drag it down to the rows section there we go now i got users on my pivot table so now what kind of data do i want to see i want to see their number of sales so i want to see um do i want to see just uh, random numbers or do I want to see their total sales? I want to see their totals. So I'm going to take it down here to the values section and drop number of sales. Now you can see their total number of sales for the month for each user. And now finally, I also want to see the amount of money that they made. So I drop that also in the value. And there you have it. So it's a very quick, very simple, very powerful tool. And now we see uh, this pivot table this pivot table is showing the how many sales were made on each day of the month another very interesting uh, set of data here and so you'll see over on the right hand side what we did differently it's the same data only this time we filtered out we didn't use user or amount but we used the date and we used the count per each day and so now you see every day in january and how many sales were made through those days so pivot, pivot tables, very uh, powerful, very good, very handy to use. Now, finally, we're going to go to charts. Now, I have three charts here. I have two bar charts, and I have one line chart. Um, the bar charts are showing two different things. One is showing the sales for each user. The other is showing the um, amount of money that each user made. And then the last one is showing how many sales uh, per day uh, throughout the month were made. And so these are made a little bit differently, uh, but it's the same, uh, you go through the same process. So uh, you would tap this insert, go to the insert tab, and then go to uh, charts. And in my case, I made um, a 2D column chart. And when you tap that, it's gonna come up blank in the beginning. You right click on it, you go to select data, and then you tell it which data uh, that you're looking for. Now, the easiest thing to do when you're making charts like this is to go ahead and pull the data from something with totals in it. That is able to really give you more control over these bar and line charts. So in this case, what I did was I went to total sales and I went ahead and just pulled this data in for my chart. And so now I have all of my data selected and I just want to show the sales. So I'm going to take off amount. I'm going to take off the per sale. And then I'm just going to click OK. And you'll see that is a direct uh, copy of what I had made just a moment ago um, over here. So that's how I created that chart. Very simple, but yet very powerful. And it allows you to have a visual representation of your data. Um, I did the exact same thing, but this time with the amount of money per user instead of the sales. And then finally over here, um, this is showing how many sales everybody made for each day in January to uh, chart it along a timeline. Now the difference here was that 
To get this data to be graphically represented the way I wanted to, what I did was I actually pulled this data from the pivot table. And so my uh, source data is actually coming from right here. So I took that data and then um, told it to make a line chart. And that's how uh, I was able to get this to come out so pretty um, like we would want it to. You'll see that's how it looks here. It's just the total of all of the days. So that was a couple of things that you can do with Excel. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, again, Excel is one of the most powerful programs in the world, and it's the most widely used data uh, program on Earth right now. And so there are tons of more things that Excel can do. And if you have any interest in wanting to see more of those, just let me know in the comments below. I'll be glad to make another video for you. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to tech. I'm Adam, your host. If you like it, please click like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.